All righty. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, three poems about um, dead people who are either po poets or politicians, or were <laughs> at one time, or maybe still are somewhere. <laughs> Baraka, 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 Amiri, Baraka, Baraka, Baraka. You pissed him off, Baraka. You pissed him off, Amiri. I hope you're busy embarrassing the governor of heaven, Baraka. I hope you're keeping true to your, the, your fire, Baraka. I hope you're getting fired up from about the poet... Sorry. I hope you're getting fired from the poet laureate of the eternal kingdom, Baraka. I hope you're shoving those truths up the eternal angelic asses, Baraka. I hope you're exposing the underside of the other side, Baraka, because you know that every kingdom's built upon the backs of the belittled, Baraka, 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 Amiri, Baraka. Don't read from untyped, handwritten poems. Note to self. <clears throat> Jack. Thank you, Jack. No, not the Kerouac, Jack, but the other Jack. You know, the one with Jack E. You saved us, Jack. That 13 days off the coast of Cuba could have blown us all the way to the moon, Jack. Yeah, to the moon. As Jack E., as in Gleason used to say to Alice, which brings me to another Alice, you know, the one with the rabbit hole. Well, we went down that rabbit hole the way, the day you went down that rabbit hole the, in the burst of blood in the American coup. No, not like the morning doves, the other kind of coup. We're talking French here, real sophisticated shit. I mean, coup d'etat. Funny how they make a violent government takeover sound classy, like it's some new fragrance from the CIA. Try a new fragrance, coup d'etat, brought to you from the fine designers of world empire perfumes, La Pentagon. Well, like I said, I gotta thank you, Jack. If we had any other cat in the White House screwing anything that moved, we would have been screwed all, screwed all the way to kingdom come. No, not that come. The other come. The other kingdom come. With really clean, well-mannered, boring guys with wings where hopefully you got to come before coming to the kingdom come. Because, you know, Jack, you had the peace of mind to have Marilyn Monroe under the presidential bed sheets at night and saved us from nuclear holocaust by day. That's some multitasking, Jack. Otherwise, I might not be here because if someone hadn't have come in early 68, I would never come out of any womb. No room in the space-time time continuum for me to come with anyone in any room. I mean, I wouldn't have stuck my fingers down that hot little Irish girl's pants on the roof of the parking garage on the French Riviera. I would have never had the chance to shit off the edge of a Himalayan mountain at night for a week or be cured of parasites with a burning rope and Tibetan chants. You are all right, Jack. You know you had it coming, but you did what you had to do, and that's a fact, Jack. <laughs> Madiba med... Mediba, Mandela, Mediba, they held your feet to the flames. You were born Khalishaza, Khalishaza, that means troublemaker in your home tongue. Mediba, Mediba, they couldn't keep you away from the cold of concrete, but you stuck it to them with a smile. You brought the whole enchilada to the rest of the world. Every country flipped them off like a New York pizza pie thrown right in their eye. That's a whole lot of amore, Mediba. Mediba, Mediba, you brought South Africa to a fever. What kind of Cheerios were you eating? I couldn't conceive her. You didn't give a shit, Reagan called you a terrorist, but you let Uncle Sam know he wasn't at the top of your list. Mediba, Mediba, 90,000 sung in the rain in Soweto. Mediba, you done your part. Now Obama's in deep with the wife for flirting with the prime blonde of Denmark. You stoked the flames of equality, rode that bitch all the way to the heavens, and took that moral arc of the universe and bent it right up their asses. Mediba, Mediba, Mediba. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much. Okay, that was my Elvis. Thank you. <laughs> I know I'm stretching it. Uh, this is this is new. Ronnie, is that your reading when you say new shit? New shit. Oh, who says that? Inspired words. Inspired words. Oh, it's it's new shit. New shit. Louder Monday. Louder, mo it, I think that's where. I think it was somebody before inspired word. Okay, somebody says it. <laughs> new shit. This is new shit. All right. 
This is about uh, three poet friends of mine on Long Island walking down the street <laughs> while I was going to the diner. Some of you may know them. <clears throat> Strutting. Two blondes and a guy strutting down the avenue. Three hep cats freewheeling to the tune of steel wheels screeching overhead. Down that Long Island train line following the sunrise to the bitter end. Past the nail shops, barber shops, the oriental massage parlors and that old Belmore coffee clutch. They're sucking in that 7 p.m. winter street light air as the local boys stare and the girls perk up in envy over the Robert Plant. Plant hair and Andy Lennox and Annie Lennox, Robert Plant and Annie Lennox hair and that guy, well, he's feeling like Saturday Night Fever on the south side of suburbia. He knows how to use a comb better than in any stud since Travolta, better than any slick South Shorey in this side of the city line. And he knows, he knows what kind of risky business goes on in that old train hurtling through the strip mall dotted highway night after the party stumblers have stumbled home from the bars and they're too cool to care certified hot chick licking cars. And me, I'm kicking it in this diner wondering what it takes to score like that. <laughs> this is inspired by a, a mountain getaway I have in Vermont. It's called Blue. It's from my, my Blue period. <clears throat> that was a joke. <laughs> you don't have to lie. I was a stone mustache traveler, long haired seasick fisherman from the comfortable, rotten, spoiled Gold Coast, a star struck road rider, whacked on Kerouac, a lover, a hugger, a dirty tree food barefoot bugger. I sensed the thirst in a blue sky woman's fingertips. I shuddered and carved her hair out of butter in my bucolic wonderlust wallet chasing, chasing knife grinding September slope sides, shack singing sea shanties out beyond seductors and gravel toad clams, shuckers and city suckers. There were canyons, canyons of carnivores, herbivores, locavores, communing in their divinity, worshiping the hallowed the hallowed earth, Buddhist throat singers, through their voices, they splashed into the echo of a lonesome lake. I came here to show myself what it's like to shave off that icy sheath of cold karmic indifference through the soundtrack of her deep blue ocean going eyes. I'd like to thank uh, Nate Watts from coming from uh, coming all the way out from uh, uh, from Long Island, from Seaford, that, Seaford, Long Island. Yeah, the only Long Islander besides myself in the house tonight. Had to make mention. <clears throat> I wrote this uh, during my. Uh, don't worry, no long explanation. Um, <laughs> I have a good friend that sings opera, and I wrote this during her opera performance. <clears throat> she got pissed at me for writing. But... Uh oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Give me back my radio. Give me back my chips. Give me back my salt sucked from my veins. Give me back my faded boots worn from walking through the bitch slap sassafras fields of your imminent orgasms. Give me back my radio. It's only tuned to the rawness of your split ends anyway. Give me back my broken wine glass shattered to the point of no return on the sh threshold of your drowning tortured toenail obsessions. Give me that flute back. You only used it to fuck the concerto anyway. Operatic notes slid down your throat in the final crescendo of nipple hard Teton mountaintops. Give me back my French. You can keep the toast. Soak them in the water lilies you left on the wall. Claude won't care. And Edvard can scream all he wants under the shattered nighttime stars of Vincent's masterpiece hanging on the wall on 53rd Street because he knows I touched it. Yeah, I committed the, the forbidden act. I touched the fucking thing. What else was I supposed to do? Swirling madness in front of my face. No glass, not a soul around. So give me back my pride. I'll give you back your wife. It wasn't you she wanted she was manipulating into a blow job anyway give me back my snow capped mountain peak imprinted by the small of your tiny back give me back my tinker toy slide guitar solo you only 
caused an avalanche of stri tri-state assholes flocking to the base of the money magnet ski place anyway. Give me back my cappuccino spaghetti rhymes. I'll take the Moroccan culinary crimes. I'll lock that Herrera in my mouth and take it to the couscous carnival on incomplete street. Wash it down with your Italian divorce soup served cold. But at least you can have your meatballs back. Better than the old slap on the back and the incandescent bar flies tender trap. Yeah, a couple more. Um, this was inspired by uh, a couple of people that most of us know. Um, Cat and Peter from Three Rooms Press. They they were, I think it was Peter that was on Facebook one one day, lamenting about the fact that a Seven Eleven opened on uh, East Fourth Street, and it's just. You know, that should be illegal for obvious reasons. Yeah. <clears throat> so this came from that. Fat cats, slowly rendered, eventually surrendered, carried through to the breaking of the U. What happened here? The whole neighborhood's come down around me, gentrified, epitomized. The whole damn place been corporatized. Even the old... Beat blocked by the blue notes, been 7 Eleven atized. I can't rap the rap, I can't tap the facts without some Wall Street hack, some big money magnet pack rat shooting me in the back with a round of blue blood fat cat advertising crap. So I got some friends who live three rooms down who took all the corporate crats, technocrats, B bureaucrats, aristocrats, and spoiled brats and drowned them in a big old slurpy vat. What do you think about that? <laughs> then I slapped, then I strapped on my rucksack and hit the subway tracks, hauled my ass uptown to where the jazz cats are at, read this poem about the 7 Eleven at Tract 187, <laughs> then headed to the east side, to the nearest tavern, where this where, that's where the truth is found, where I can knock one back with my baby and still hang on to what's real while I stare into her pale blonde face with among vibrations from that big old upright bass. That's, that's when I know what I found what's right with the human race. Ain't no concrete canyons going to teach me that. Ain't no college going to write that on my hat. I'll take my yoga off my mat, pray for redemption of the big old fat cats, and that's all I got to say about that. Yeah. Fucking A, man. We need to bring back <laughs> Occupy Wall Street. I, yeah, I think yeah. that is possible. I, I don't know. They fucking gave up, man. They don't get it. Closed on A Street. Yes, Out of business. Giddy up. All right. Southland Corporation has enough fucking money. All right. Uh, last one. This is more new shit. New shit. New shit. <laughs> All right. I don't know where this one came from. It just. It came from the sky. <laughs> Hallelujah to the high-heeled honeys. Rock. Rock this. Rock that cat. Like an expat on Parisian sex chat. I mean, shake that shindig like a salt shaker on steroids in Margaritaville. You got to ride the ride that rump in the jungle hunt. Capture those tigers and tigresses like Superfly on Curtis Mayfield's birthday. Paint it black like Johnny Cash in a fashion shoot. Happy birthday, Johnny. Break that boogie. Slam that sucker right there where the swing meets the sway and the swooners catch that candy in the sweet sand of Rio, Rio de Janeiro sweat fest. Twirl that tail like a turnstile in the transcendental moonlight. You are cutting rugs like a Mexican flamenco dancer chasing down a Tijuana sunset. Sing hallelujahs to the high-heeled angels swaying to the beat of the barrios under Chilean streetlights. It's the only way to lick that little number. It's the only way to cure what's killing you. You got to suck that baby right out of her shell before the oyster farmers find her and sell her off to some black sea merchant looking for his next copper mine. You can you can shoot it all straight to hell, but sure beats killing time hanging out in the parking lot of the old suburban five and dime. Thank you. That's great.